So I basically used these um, crystals, stones, to keep this roll. Like this actually wants to roll back, so I just put it here to keep them from rolling back. And I'm surprised by how they actually work so well because they are not very heavy actually. And then I just got some flower here. I don't remember the name. <laughs> it's a gardenia or a magnolia. Um, they smell so nice, and I'm just hoping that some of the smell, the scent, can actually be infused into the fabric. And I actually bought it from an old lady in the street yesterday, and she's selling them for like, you know, one quid for two packs of this, so like six. Uh, yeah, so beautiful. Hi, welcome to the Basic Stitch Knitting Podcast episode 24. I'm Celine coming to you from Hong Kong. I am Ochia, O-C-H-Y-A, on Ravelry and on Instagram. It's basic.stitch.knitting. So uh, if you'd like to get in touch, other than commenting down below, um, we can be friends on Ravelry as well as on uh, Instagram where you can send direct messages and we can have more of a conversation in there. And recently I have uh, 1,111 followers on Instagram that was like, I like that number. It's a very special number. So yeah, uh, I don't mind it if you like to follow, um, follow me on Instagram if you haven't done so and thereby breaking, you know, ruining that perfect number. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much if you're there following and because um, recently I'm feeling like, you know, I really don't make money from this this podcast. I don't sell things. I'm not selling things and I'm not really sponsored. Uh, sometimes, you know, like very rarely though, like I might be contacted to have a giveaway, but it's, you know, when I send those things to people sometimes after receiving it, I still spend money. So basically I spend money in and um, don't really make money from this. And I'm happy with that in a sense, like, I don't really have anything to sell. I don't really have much, like, life skill. Um, and I've decided that I'll just make my money somewhere else to sustain my hobby. So this is my hobby. And what will definitely make me feel like this is definitely worth my time, other than that I enjoy doing it while I do it, is your support through uh, your comments, you know, interactions that make me feel like, uh, I'm making friends, which was the first and main reason I started the, this podcast. So, um, you know, the number of followers, the number of likes, that will never definitely, um, you know, it's it's something I gauge how well I'm doing at least. And also, the I know there are people who watch and enjoy but forgot to forget to click the like button or whatever but just like to remind you guys if you enjoy this podcast or if you like to support me through those things you know like let me know that I'm doing the right thing you can like and subscribe or share a comment because uh, it's a YouTube algorithm thing algorithm is a thing now on Instagram on YouTube and everywhere else maybe on Facebook as well uh, we don't exactly know the formula, they change it all the time. Uh, but from what I heard is, uh, one of you told me last episode that you just don't get notification, like updates notification for my podcast anymore. It's my fault because uh, YouTube doesn't really like it when people upload irregularly, I heard. like So they will definitely prioritize people who update, say like every Thursday, every Tuesday, that kind of thing. So um, I don't really do that and I don't upload, not even like regularly, I don't upload frequently enough. So um, that might be the reason why they don't really notify you. They will definitely uh, prioritize notifying you, those who update uh, very regularly. So, um, but there is something you can still do if you like to receive, make sure you receive re a notification when I do upload. Uh, a new episode and that is under your subscribed button next to your subscribe button under this video there is a bell there so if you click on it and choose to receive notification you'll start to receive notification about uh, the updates of this podcast I believe and uh, yeah 
I don't remember how I got here. Like, why am I even talking about this? But, oh, by the way, talking about algorithm, all right, it's so weird. I, and it scares Joe as well, because I'm an iHerb loyal customer. iHerb, I-H-E-R-B. I buy all of my things there. I'm actually going to talk about like two products that I really like from them. I mean, uh, later on in the chatty, Bit. I'm not sure if you actually like to listen to those things in a knitting podcast, but I feel like, you know, this is my podcast. I really want to talk about what I really love in life. Um, anyway, so I uh, buy a lot of things from them and I look at things. And sometimes what I search on iHerb or like something that I have bought for Jose, for example, actually appeared on his Facebook advertisement and it scares him. It's like, why is it here? Like, why is the muslin cloth that you bought me here on my ad and like the nuts that he really liked that I bought for him and uh, things that I might be interested in, you know, like I didn't even use his, like, I didn't even use his computer to buy those things. And he guess maybe it's because YouTube or, you know, oh my God, like Facebook might actually know that we spend a lot of time together. And then there's like this huge network of information sharing. I don't know. So they get our location and then they get all the information from us both and cross share it. I don't know. It's just really creepy. I don't know how it works. If you work in IT industry and you know how it works, please let me know. I mean, out of curiosity, I know I have no control over my information anyway. So, um, yes. Okay, it's a lot of mumbling, mumbling, rambling, but uh, before going, jumping straight into what I've been knitting, I like to say something as well about uh, something that I forgot to say in episode 22nd. Is it how I started this conversation at the beginning? I don't remember. Okay, anyway, so in the episode 22nd, I, it was an episode that I recorded after a long while, after a long absence since March, I believe. Um, I recorded 22nd, episode 22nd in July or early August, I don't remember, July I believe, July 2019. And I talked about how I felt, you know, the lack of interest in knitting for a while and I was worried about whether that's it, whether, you know, um, that's the end of my interest or passion in knitting. And uh, probably a little bit about how I, why I didn't record podcast because of things going on in my life and also I didn't have anything to show you. Um, First of all, thank you so much for your words of encouragement and letting me know that it's okay to not record a podcast when I don't really enjoy knitting or have nothing to uh, show or I'm just really busy, life gets in the way. yeah, thank you for that encouragement and, you know, the reassurance that it's okay. Um, you don't feel that I'm an irresponsible podcaster. Because, like, you know, once you put yourself up there, you feel this, like, responsibility to keep doing it. You know, it's not... Because I, I sometimes I see some podcast that stops after three episodes. And recently I've been listening to a lot of, like, audio podcast. Um due to the fact that there's no Wi-Fi in this flat. It's a long story, but uh, we're dealing with it. But because of that, I will just want to listen to audio podcasts using my phone because it doesn't drain as much, you know, like data as a video. So, and I I listen to it through Spotify because I don't have iTunes on my phone. I'm not an iPhone user. And then there are like podcasts that recorded like three episodes and while they're doing it, I didn't feel that they are serious about it at all, you know, and I just feel like if that's the case, why do it, you know? And at the same time, I impose that kind of responsibility on myself as well. Um, but yeah, so just thank you for understanding and, and uh, sorry if it worries you when I talk about those struggles in me, but the struggles were kind of over. I'm pretty sure they will come back again in the future, but I just won't really want to talk about it and let you know how I felt um, because that's me. Like I like to, when I'm sad or when I'm like feeling like I'm in a position where I don't know 
you know everything kind of feel felt negative i will really try to get out of it and then when i look back i will you know like analyze self-analyze things and what made me sad and what was the thing that was keeping me from doing what i want to do that kind of thing and i'm pretty sure I, i'm not alone in that i'm and i just really want some of you guys like if one of you are feeling like you don't really want to niche and you know it's really good enough that you're watching this because when when sometimes when I don't want to knit, I just don't want to talk about knitting at all because it makes me feel guilty and I, d I don't really want to watch podcast either. I didn't really watch much podcast during the time I didn't want to knit. And I just want to let you know, at the end of the day, I got through it and I felt it was okay. And even if I didn't pick up knitting anymore, it was probably okay too. So if that's the case that you're going through, it's okay. Just relax. And deal with the part of life that you have to deal with that you should never avoid again never run away from the problem again deal with that first and if you feel like it come back to knitting afterwards um, yeah so it's like a message about thank you so much for encouragement and also I hope uh, it kind of helps one of you guys who needs you know like that kind of reassurance as well so yes right now that's a really really long introduction that's like 10 minutes 11 minutes <laughs> if you're still with me thank you so much uh, sometimes i feel like i shouldn't be talking too much about non-knitting stuff i should like jump right into it and show you the knitting because that's what people are here for but at the same time when i you know analyze the podcast that i really enjoy it's not necessarily the things that she's knitting or the yarn she's using especially if it's you know just i don't know like not a special yarn that i've never heard of um, it's usually how her or his relationship with the making process, the knitting, and what she's been going through, like how she's being a decent human this week, that kind of thing. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But anyway, I decide to actually talk about knitting now. <laughs> so, I actually have an app, oh, a finished object, and, um, it's really small. I have never shown you this before. It has never been... Uh, a whip on this uh, podcast and dun 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 look at it it's a cauldron okay so let me talk a little bit about this basically okay the pattern this is a free pattern and it's called tiny cauldron and the designer is a uh, tiny owl knits okay it's a free pattern did I mention that and it asks for some yarn that you can felt so this is actually felted. This is my first felt object ever, 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 ever. So I actually didn't know how to felt something yet. And um, so I chose this yarn. What's actually recommended in the pattern? I have my pattern ready here. It uses Dabby Bliss Como. Okay, but what I did, what I use is this. Can you see? drops Eskimo and I have this much left I think I can make a uh, another like small cauldron out of this I'm pretty sure and it has for a needle 10 10 millimeter needles so size 15 that is 10 millimeter and I really didn't want to go online and buy a 10 millimeter needle because I'm just really not sure if I'm going to knit anything in that size maybe in the future but I don't really knit chunky knits and my in my current stash my thickest heaviest yarn is Aran weight yarn so even when I was knitting a shawl asking for chunky weight yarn I was basically uh, knitting with two strands of Aran together Anyway, so this is what I bought from, uh, it's called Living Plaza in Hong Kong, but I guess it's called Daiso anywhere else, because here it says Daiso anyway. Can you see it? Okay, I'm just going to remove this. Yeah, Daiso. 10 millimeter. And it looks pretty stupid, <laughs> but does it work? Yep. And, um... It's actually a little bit awkward when I uh, needed to knit like across small number of stitches 
but anyway, I just it's a make it work situation because I wanted a cauldron, um, but I don't want to buy a needle for it. Like this is twelve dollars, Hong Kong twelve Hong Kong dollars. So it's approximately one point two uh, GBP, and then times seven point eight five. That will be how much it is in US dollar. And I just learned that it's probably, you know, Hong Kong to Canadian dollars is w one Canadian dollar to approximately six or 5.9999, 5.9999 Hong Kong dollar, which is a oh, beautiful number. I love simple number like that, you know. Oh, do you mean six dollars, six Hong Kong dollars? <laughs> you know, when people say one Canadian dollars, because I'm really bad at math, okay. So this... Actually, I'm not sure uh, if you look at the pattern on Ravelry, the shape is cuter, like, you know, it's like rounder and then it's smaller around here and the handles are bigger. Here it asks for, I think, like five stitches or six stitches, I don't remember, but if I'm going to do it again, which I will, I'm definitely going to knit this, like the handle longer, so that it just looks like more like a cauldron and um, and also I, I guess how it holds its shape or how you form the shape has a lot to do with how you felt it and how you dry it basically it retains the shape how you dry it but what I did I was I just put it on the windowsill um, somewhere else and go home like go to another home <laughs> and um, yeah so but still I can hold quite a lot of things here and I have these ends here. I was thinking about cutting it off. I might in the future, but now I don't really want to do it because I really, you know, like to... It, it's not meant to be perfect and I like to know or let people know that it's completely handmade by uh, me. <laughs> so um, I really like to want to keep the imperfections in there. Also, I'm not sure if you can see. I think if I open this window, you can see better. Oh, can you see that? Can you see those, like, spots where, you know, you can... Let me focus on it. Like, when the light shine through. Ah, I know. So, you can see those light coming through because apparently <laughs> it's the stitches. And um, if I'm to do it again, again, I will want to use a slightly smaller needle uh, so that it closes better. But when I show you like this, you can't really see the stitches. Please excuse my messy, messy table. Yeah, you can't really see the stitches. Oh yes, a little bit. Can you see it? Yeah. So one of the reasons why I want to knit myself a cauldron like this is because um, a while ago I saw on Muji a bowl, a felted bowl, a wool, felted wool ball, bowl, bowl, <laughs> slightly bigger than this, and it was retailing at a price that I was just not willing to pay. I'm like, I don't remember how much it is. I'm like. I can do this myself, mate. Like, I'm totally not going to buy from you at that price point when it's like wool, you know. It's, you know, I'm a knitter, you know, I work with wool. So, yes, um, yeah, just, ah, oh, so cute. I like the, you know, the rounded bottom. And this is a super quick knit. Again, uh, I like to show you the. It's a Eskimo drops Eskimo, so you know the price point is super low, and then um, it's a very quick knit. I think I knit it under an hour. I knit it while I was editing episode twenty third, so twenty third, twenty third episode. So um, yeah, if you like to have a cauldron to put your stuff, maybe your. Uh, knitting notions, your uh, stitch marker and stuff like that. Totally check out the pattern. It's called Tiny Cauldron by uh, Little Owl Knits. I mean Tiny Owl Knits. Tiny Owl Knits. I'm going to write all the information 
in the show notes down below. Last episode, I did really, really amazing show notes. Nobody told me that. I told myself. It's amazing. Um, so definitely check it out. <laughs> I spent time writing those show,、uh, show notes. So, yes. And that's my only、um, FO. It's such a small project and it's really, really quick knit.、Uh, next. Up, I'm going to talk about the, par- the, the projects that I have actually been working on because, well, I have been working on this, but I couldn't say it has grown a lot. This is Frozen Harbor by Ines Seng.、Uh, it's a paid for pattern. Oh my god, you know, it's such a simple pattern, and I'm really not showing it in a good light because I'm, you know, still knitting it. It's such a simple pattern. And it has not grown like by a lot, I don't think. So, but I just really want to mention this project because it's so beautiful. You know, sometimes you want to knit really funky knits, sometimes you just want something that is timeless and elegant. And I think this project is it. Okay, I knit it out of Flora, Drops Flora, Gray Mix. And I put it in my Rosia by Lily、uh, project bag with foxes. Next up, I'd like to talk about、uh, a sock that I mentioned last time that I didn't get to show because I didn't have it with me. And I just decided to put it into the next episode, which is this episode. And I have put it in my THK Tiny Human Knits project bag with, of course,、uh, Hufflepuff. Badge. By the way, my brother just recently、uh, did his Pottermore、uh, test to, to check which house he belongs to. His girlfriend belongs to Hufflepuff, what he told me. And I was like, yeah, normal people go, go to Hufflepuff. Everybody is a Hufflepuff. Like, it's where normal people go to. And, then he, and I assume he's a Hufflepuff too. And turned out he's a Gryffindor. And he said he, he thought he would be a Slytherin. I'm like, I don't know why he thought that. You know, he's not that cool. But he's definitely, I don't know. And I was like, do you know Gryffindor is like, you know, kind of asshole y? <laughs> like, he said, I know, like, that's why I, I was quite surprised. Because, you know, like, when, when you're young, like, really young, the first time you read first book, second book, or just the first time you read the whole series of Harry Potter, you felt like, You know, you always identify with the main guy, which is Harry Potter, and you always feel like it's, or just identify with everybody else, you know, and then you feel like everybody else in Gryffindor because it's where the protagonist and important people are formed, right? And good people are formed from. So you feel like, you know, it's, a, it's normal, it's right, and it's ideal to be from Gryffindor. You want to be in Gryffindor. And when you first found out that you're not a Gryffindor, you feel like,、oh, I'm just a normal person. But the thing is, when you read it again, like Harry Potter as an adult, or you read it for the second, third, fourth time, sometimes you just feel like Harry is just a person who wants to be a hero. I mean, nothing really bad about that, but the other side, the flip side of wanting to be a hero is basically attention seeking. You know, when you first read it, you feel like he didn't choose fate. Fate chose him, you know. He, he was compelled to do those things. No, he had a choice. He just wanted to break all the rules and he just wanted to, you know, to be the one who solved the problem.、Um, maybe nothing really bad about it, but <laughs> that's not how normal people think, okay? Normal people want to help people, want to cooperate with people, and want to be nice. You know, and want to, and sometimes people are smart. Sometimes people can be brave, but not reckless. And,、um, you know, we don't have to be Gryffindor. It's good. Like, some people have to be Gryffindor, but it's okay to be Hufflepuff. I don't know why I started this. Oh my god, what, a, what an episode. This is an, quite an unusual episode. Or maybe you might be thinking there's nothing unusual about it, Celine, because you ramble a lot most of the time. Anyway, so this is the project bag. And I put this sock in that as well, but、um, I didn't really knit too much. You know, I think I can start to knit the 
the cuff soon. Not really, not really, come on, not really. And I haven't decided whether I'm going to continue to knit the cuff in the same color, Blue Sea, not Blue Lagoon. I said Blue Lagoon last time. And, or, or to choose another yarn, I'm not sure. And so, the project that I mentioned last time that I didn't get to show you is this. This is a very wonky looking sock because I changed the number of stitches here and there. I cast it on like 20 stitches here using Judy Magic Cast On and then I continued until I don't remember how many stitches. I'll be writing it in my, um, if not show notes, then my project page because I just changed throughout so it just looks really wonky here and there. Um, and I have two stitches to kind of tell myself where I start to do make the changes so that I can repeat the same with my next sock. I decided that um, there are a lot of benefits with knitting two socks at the first time, like a pair of socks at the, two at the same time, but at, it just slows me down so much and I just don't like to not see any progress. So uh, I decided to just do one by one sock. This is Drops Fabel and the colorway I believe is just like called pink and yellow or yellow and pink. And I like to call this my matchy matchy socks because if you've watched my first episode of Basic Stitch Knitting Podcast, you have seen this yarn before. I loved this yarn so much back then and I still love it. Basically, I loved it. I knit a pair of socks for Joe before. This is probably the first pair of socks that I knit for him. And look at how he folds this. Like, it looks like it's from like Spongebob or whatever, like what kind of human fold their socks like this? I'm going to open it. Uh, how to do that? How does he do that? I don't know. Anyway, look at it. Look at it. I don't have a sock blocker, of course. Um, <laughs> but look at it. Um, I think I... I totally don't remember what I did about this, but this is just a plain vanilla sock and I'm pretty sure this is Fish Lips Kiss Heel and yeah, I don't remember anything about this. I don't even remember what, whether it's a top down or a toe up sock, but just look at the difference, okay? I'm just going to show you how big is the difference in the sizes between my sock and his sock. It's not crazy. It's not that crazy, maybe. Maybe it is. <laughs> Moving to the next project, I really would like to show you the needle I'm using. It's 2.25. 2.25 in um, Eddie needle. I think it's Eddie Lace, Eddie Turbo, Eddie Sock Needles. I don't know because there's so many names for the same needle because Eddie is like German and they have different markets under different names so but I always tell people it's a uh, Eddie with red cord, red cable, okay. It's my favorite needle. I've talked about it and compared it with a Haya Haya before and my conclusion is when it comes to sock needle like you know 2.5 2.25 or 2 or even like 3, I prefer higher higher because, I mean I prefer uh, Eddy because it's sufficiently pointy and it's really sleek but it's not like sharp. But a higher higher sharp one when it's sock needles is just too sharp. I used to have one 2.5 higher higher sharp fixed circular needle and then I lend it to my friend and I decided to let her keep it because I just don't knit with it. I know in the last episode I said I prefer DPNs now and I really don't want to go back to circular needle but then when I knit on this I think it's fine again. Oh look at the memory, okay? Um, it's fine again. I just, um, I really like Eddie 2.25 or even 2.5. I just really like it. I think it's like sometimes when this is too long or whatever I don't know, I just still like it, okay? <laughs> okay, so, well, 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 it's so far away. So my last object is uh, living here in this bag. And this is, uh, sorry for the noise, sorry for the noise, sorry for the noise. 
so they're, they're still working after a week. Okay, so my next and probably the last project I will show in this episode lives in this bag. This is my new acquisition. Do you remember once upon a time I'm just that knitter girl who don't have any proper like handmade uh, yarn bag because they're all so expensive for her? I mean, you know, she is a very basic girl. She feels like I can even use Ziploc bag, who cares? But then, you know, she just finds out about all these like really beautiful fabric and then like, you know, really well-made bag, reasonably priced. And she feels like she's going to earn more because she's no longer a trainee anymore. So, <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, I bought this. This is my latest acquisition and it's really, really, let's say reasonably priced but uh, i learned about this seller from the happy knitting podcast she mentioned the seller recently in her latest episode i don't remember which episode it was but she talked about it and she thinks she basically underpriced her project back and it's kind of the truth so <laughs> anyway so uh let me show you the this is gb russo's I mean, yep. And uh, yeah, Julia from the Happy Knitting podcast mentioned it, and then I looked it up and I saw this bag. When I saw it, it came in like several sizes. On one of the size, it's kind of like, um, let me see. It's kind of like this. You know, it's a it's a fabric with big pattern repeat if you see what I mean so it comes like this and then it has horses chickens some lambs and some a rabbit that I don't really care so and I was like oh only pigs are missing because um the, you know it's my Chinese zodiac my Chinese zodiac sign is horse and then these are all my family's uh, zodiac signs and pigs are missing and then I was like oh but maybe I can buy it and embroider the pig on it or whatever what was I thinking <laughs> I don't even know how to embroider huh anyway and then I clicked on another listing and this time miraculously it has pigs can you see it oh my god oh my god and then I showed it to my mom when I got it and she was like she was really happy about it and I'm not sure if I should buy one more while, you know, they, the seller still have it. Um, what's her name again? Jibi Runits. Jibi So. Jibi Rune Sos. Okay, Jibi Rune Sos. Um, because when I told her about this, I'm like, you know, there are some rabbits here and I don't know, like, who cares about rabbits? And then she said, rabbits, rabbit or hare, I don't remember what it is. Is the Chinese zodiac sign of both my maternal and paternal grandma. Really? And then unfortunately we don't know the zodiac signs of both my maternal and paternal grandpa, but I believe my grandpa is probably a rat and it doesn't have a rat in here. So uh, I'm sorry grandpas that I've never met, but both of them. Anyway, and then I started to put things in there and my mom was like, are you sure you want to use it? Because this is so precious for her. She feels like it's something that I shouldn't use. That's my mom, okay. Uh, maybe I should buy one more <laughs> for her. And this time I will definitely tell the seller, like, please make sure it includes all of the animals there. And this one is a project back that with a, a slightly smaller base, but it doesn't really bother me, okay. But one thing that it does bother me is at the zipper okay someone's talking outside at the zipper it's connected to this and I tried really hard like it, it has the C ring here okay I tried really hard to close it you can see it's kind of closed already but then it still easily slips out so instead of going through the trouble of putting it in again I just remove it and put it in this bag and you know, wait till a better solution. Maybe I just need to like twist it more. 
but it just slips out. Glue gun, maybe, to to close the the you new know, the opening. I don't know. I don't have a glue gun, and I'm definitely not going to buy glue gun for this purpose. Anyway, that's the only downside, okay? And it has this thing for your notion and stuff as well. Living inside is my Stockbridge cardigan. Let me show you the pattern first because I just want to show you Isolde Teak. Hi! Hello, Isolde! Okay, Stockbridge is a pattern by Isolde Teak and I talk about it. You know, it had the, the sweater had its first appearance last episode, episode 20. Third, so uh, twenty, yeah, twenty third. So if you'd like to have more information about it, uh, you can go back to it where I talked about gauge and stuff, and the yarn. So this is where I'm at now. I don't know why the lower bit looks crinkly as well because I guess I just stuck it into my project bag. Uh, last episode, I stopped it. Or I don't even want to show you the back side of it because it's like gross, 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 gross. Um, okay. I put a stitch marker here, a progress keeper here, and this is how I, how much I knit, like the for the whole body part, uh, since last time, and then I hold. Uh, basically, it's a it's a cardigan, right? So it's like this, and it has an opening. You from the bottom part, you knit the whole thing until the armhole part then the pattern asks us to uh, hold this part these stitches and these stitches on stitch holder or anything like sh a string of yarn or whatever and we just work at the back part okay so i don't have anything to hold the stitches now i mean i have like you know i can use my needle cable and then i have that stopper but i i have that at another home like my parents home so I just need to make it work for me and what I had at the time was you know two needles two pair of circular needles that I know I wouldn't use recently and uh, this is how it looks like now <laughs> but it's, it's uh, some cheap not exactly cheap but then uh, you know like quality wise I don't really love arrow brand and then I put a, a stitch marker here so hold them together and use a strand of yarn that I have around, you know, stray strand of yarn to tie it up so that they don't go like however they like to go. It's like four needles flying around on top of the two needles that I work with. But this is definitely not ideal. You know, this is the first time I feel like, hmm, maybe I should really buy those like shoulder stitches holder, you know, that looks like a big pin. And then... I work some more here. This is the front, and this is like the side view. I'm not sure if I can show it properly. Okay, this is the side view. Bind off some stitches, and then decreases some sit decreased some stitches, and now I need to do like forty approximately rows of um, plain stockinette stitch. After that, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I totally don't read ahead because I, that's how much confidence I have in Isolde Teak's uh, pattern. I've never knit from her pattern before, but just really heard a lot of good stuff about her. So I'm totally knitting with faith, with blind faith. Um, yeah, I blocked, I believe, I blocked this part a little. So um, you can definitely see it's different. It's more even, and the stitches are bigger. And here, the stitches are not as even, it's smaller, the fabric might be holier, holier as in H-O-L-E-Y, holy, and holier, okay? Uh, because I, you know, the, the fabric hasn't actually bloomed yet. And when I cut the knee, cut the yarn and start again, I actually hide, you know, the yarn, the, the, I'm not sure if you can see, I can totally see it. There's a row here. Can you see? That's how I hide, like hit the, the end of the stray yarn. What's a stray yarn? I don't remember what's called. Waste yarn. 
I, I hit it the way I usually hit uh, yarn when I was doing color work. I learned that from Futi Knitting. And this time I'm doing it on the row pearl side. And it's not that hard to understand how you do it. Should I explain how I do it? Maybe next time. I don't really have the mental capacity to explain it this time because I kind of need to show it, okay? Next time if I do it, I'll show you. Um, yeah, that's uh, my progress with my cardigan, my Stockbridge cardigan. Sorry, it's not a lot of um, work. I mean, it's not nothing to me, but you can't see, you know, the, the difference. But I'm really totally looking forward to, you know, work more on that. And that's why I haven't been working on other projects that much. Uh, yeah, that's the knitting part for this episode. And now I'd like to talk a little about the products that I'm loving recently. The first product that I like to talk about is this. Okay, I'm not really making any money from this. I might put my iHerb link down there. It's a link where if you click into it and register as a member and buy something, you will have five US dollar uh, discount and I will probably have five US dollar discount as well. But um, that's it. It's not like if you click on any like products link, it, it I will get some commission. No, they don't do like association links like that. And I just really, really want to talk about what I like because I like to talk about these things. I would just, you know, like meet a friend for the first time and she gets some like mosquito bites and I will be like, oh, have you heard of this? <laughs> so this is um, Badger anti bug anti-bug bomb and look at it look at the badger oh so cute it's trying to catch bugs but according to those who have seen badgers in real life like joe and his friend he said like badgers are totally not pleasant animals and uh the the tin actually looks a bit like old now because that's you know i uh, it's a bit old and i can't open it that's the problem with this so on iHerb, they have Badger Bomb, and then they actually have a new version where you kind of like scroll it up and apply it without touching it. And I would recommend that one. Not because I mind touching this, because it has like really, really natural ingredients. Let me read it to you, some of them, like castor oils and essential oils of a lot of things, like cedar, citronella, lemongrass, rosemary, geranium. That's it, like that's the active ingredients and the inactive ingredients include extra virgin olive oil and beeswax. And some of them, a lot of them are certified organic. Like, I don't mind touching it, I don't mind applying it when I'm eating, you know. Like there are people who, say for example, when I went to Thailand with Joe, we, we had dinner next to the beach and for some reason there was mosquito and you don't want to be spraying like mosquito repellent with DEET, like D-E-E-T, when you're eating, right? And you don't want your kids to really use those things if you have kids. Um, but this one, I have no problem. I would just open it and put it on my table and me and Joe would be using it, you know, applying it very generously. It takes forever to actually finish this. After finishing this, because I don't like to waste stuff, I'm definitely going to buy the newer one the, the roll-on one. It's slightly more expensive, but this one, the problem is it's so hard to open and I don't want to, you know, waste time on the video to to <laughs> to um, open it. it. Smells really nice too. Uh, to me, basically it's the only bug bomb that has ever worked. This is what Joe said too. And I'm comparing it with, you know, commercial bug spray repellent with DEET as well like this is the only thing that has ever worked and we we saw it work every time you know like those are like small little mosquitoes uh, surrounding Joe's ankles and then we apply this and they immediately disappear so this really really work okay and the next thing that I bought I don't know if you know like it's it's this anyway look at that I should I think I showed a little bit of like footage of this before. It is called Manoi Tiki Tahiti Tipanie. Tipani? Basically, it's a coconut oil. I think Manoi means coconut oil. And it has coconut oil in there and tiara flower, which is gardenia. Gardenia Tahinensis, okay. And some perfume, like fragrance, and vitamin E. 
I don't know what the favorite fragrance is and like I said I usually avoid things with fragrance but oh, this smells so nice like I don't know let me let me open it and sniff it <sighs> it's, it's it smells so 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 nice so nice so nice so nice <laughs> actually and look at this I really love this it, you know I love the vibe of this you know packaging and I believe after finish a bottle of it I'm going to look like her by the way I am learning you know the Hawaiian dance Tahitian dance both of them uh, I originally I like Hawaiian dance better because I like that kind of like gentleness and then there's like you know like nature and stuff but the Tahitian dance, I just feel like there's more like energy in it and I feel like it's a really nice workout for me as well and they do the slow one uh, slow Tahitian dance have slow one and fast one and when you do the slow one it's similar to the Hawaiian ones in a sense like they talk about the birds, they talk about the flower, the land, you know the sun <laughs> Yeah, I'm not really good, but I it makes me feel really happy doing like a Polynesian dance. I hope it's not called, you know, like some people, I, I, I think I read about it like in some American university in the States. Uh, people were having Polynesian dance club and it was accused of, like accused for appropriating culture. I know it's a very sensitive issue in the States and I can't say I fully get it because in Asia it's not really a topic that we discuss and sometimes, um, I'm not sure if this is a popular opinion but what to me appropriating is like when you use or when you do something from another culture in a way that is disrespectful uh, that you're making jokes about it or you're like hypersexualize it, you know, like I know those things happen but or, or just like highly commercialize it without really recognizing, acknowledging the real cultural elements of it I think that's appropriating but you know, if I do something out of appreciation, like if I dance Tahitian dance or if there is like some students, you know, like maybe white students in the States wanting to do Tahitian dance or Hawaiian dance out of appreciation, I don't know why it should be called appropriating, appropriation of culture. Anyway, <laughs> all of that starts from this oil. It smells so nice and to be honest, uh, on iHerb it has different flavor like jasmine and this is tiara gardenia and i think they have um other flavor fragrance scent that i really want plumeria plumeria i believe white flowers and i really want to buy that bottle as well but i decided i'm going to use this up first i don't want to be hoarding oils um yeah it's i can't i can't say much about this other than you know, it just feels smell, smells really, really nice. You just want to apply it all over your body and it's not super greasy. It's not greasy at all. And Joe uses it too. And we really like the scent. And um, yeah. And it has a real flower in there. Like dried flower. Oh, by the way, I, I soaked my Stockbridge cardigan halfway through because I wanted to check the gauge, right? and uh, the gauge is approximately right now and uh, I put it on a flat surface and I put some flowers on it I think it's called magnolia the white flower they smell really nice I bought it off the street because usually in Hong Kong you might see like old women old ladies uh, selling like packs of flour like in a plastic bag it has like three flowers in there and I bought it like ten dollars for two packs and um they smell really nice and I just lay it out on the on my knit fabric my cardigan to dry it out and it has been like a week now 
and whenever I knit on my sweater, I still smell it. It smells so nice. It's like basically the cardigan is smelling like flowers for days and I really like it. Um, actually that flower kind of looks like this flower and I don't know like there are some flowers like white flowers that are just really similar to me and I love white flowers. <laughs> so um, that's it. That's it for my nitty and non nitty stuff and if you enjoyed it please give this video a thumbs up and uh, feel free to comment and let me know whether you enjoyed like you know me talking about the products that I like or I don't think anyone of you will tell me to keep it to knitting okay <laughs> that's a, lo a lot of podcasters have been receiving it recently a lot of crafters have been receiving it recently especially from the state side um, maybe you know, because they were talking about politics because they can't help talking about it. They're human, you know. It's They're talking about something that affects their life, affects the life of people that they know. And then they receive, like, negative feedback, like, keep it to knitting. I'm like, they're not you. I know they're not you. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Is there anything I'd like to add before ending? Oh! Yes. I'm so scared of brain and I'm not even pregnant. Um so last episode I talked about more than fingering kill and I introduced the prize that's gonna be for the winner of that uh, more than fingering shawl along kill and it's yarn that is sponsored by Pakor Kitties. First of all, I pronounced it as Pakor Kitties and while I pronounced it I kind of knew I was wrong but I think it's Pakor Kitties, right? And then also, I mispronounced the name of the dyer. It's L O I S, and it's that girl in Family Guy, right? And then I pronounced it as Lois because I thought Joe pronounced it as that. But yesterday, when I asked him, wait, you pronounce it as Lois, right? I mean, I said, how do you pronounce L O I S? And he said, Lois. Oh, no, you pronounce it as Lois. And he said, no, Lois. And I'm like, okay, I just said Lois several times in my podcast last episode i want to die now and then he cringed as well i said yeah you should <laughs> okay so the winner uh of the 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 more than fingering cal will win <laughs> sock kit from pakor kitties died by lois okay let's end this episode on that note so hopefully you'll uh, have a wonderful day today and um, see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>